due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Your podcast will fast, will fast, will fast. It's just a coincidence that you are talking about the Jack and Triumph show, and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey, man, this is Kevin Smith, the guy who makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com, and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcasting. You're listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Now, here's Chris Cologne and Paul Pasquillo. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. And we're recording in Paul's parents' house. It's pretty fucking awesome. This is the first time I've known you for what, for six years? Five, six years? <laughs> this is the first time you. you yeah. Know, the first time you allowed me to come into your parents' house. But, He's very scared, by the way. But it's like, like, and I don't ever want people to think that um, I don't want them to come to my house. I mean, my house is a fucking wreck. I mean, let's just let's let's fucking call it what it is. I'm a bachelor. I live like a fucking bachelor. If you said, "Hey, can I come upstairs?" I'd say, "Sure." I hope you don't fucking mind. <laughs> you know, you know. I, I hope you know. I, I you know. If you're like a person that's like a clean freak or a neat freak or anything like that, you'd probably have a heart attack coming into my house. Kelsey would probably clean your house. She would. I I think, and I'm glad you mentioned it because I don't want to say it, but I think if Kelsey walked into my house, her head would probably fucking explode. (laughs) Yeah, because she's a neat freak and I'm the exact opposite. I'm a fucking slob. I live like a slob, you know, but at least like. I know where all my stuff is. <laughs> like, like when when I when I was still married, like my ex wife used to like just move my shit. Like, and she wasn't a big cleaner. She wasn't a neat freak or anything like that. But she would clean. And then like I'm like, honey, where's the where's the thing that was over here? You know, I, I don't know. I'm like, but you cleaned, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, where is it? Where the fuck did you put it? I don't know. Like, you know, at least keep track early. I put it over here, or at least give me the fucking general idea of where it might be. So I I. I Got, you know, it was so frustrating, you know, and I'm at a point right now where, like, I'm so used to living by myself that I don't know what I would do if I had it else. Oh, God. You know, I mean, the only person, I swear, the only person that I would probably, the only person I'd want to live with is, like, if I got custody of my daughter. And at least my daughter understands. If I had to share a roof with another adult human being, I don't know what the f***. Because it's like, you know, I know where my stuff is. No one's going to move it. No one's going to give me fucking grief. You know, when I want to clean, I'll clean. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's sort of like, you know, there's no schedule. There's no like, oh, okay, this needs to be taken care of. I'm just going to sit over here and just, you know, <laughs> this, you know, the Star Trek game is wonderful. <laughs> but I mean, I just, I never want people to think like, oh, you know, Chris, you know, Chris is always coming over here. He never invites us over to his place. And it's sort of like, I don't, you know, it's, it's, I would very, I would, I, I would, I would invite you over if you didn't, if, you know, I didn't want your head to explode when you got to my house. <laughs> you know, I'm not used to having guests, you know, it's been a while. And even like the last serious relationship I had, even the girl I kind of, I was messing around with a girl last year and uh, not messing around, but you know, it was a girl I was kind of seeing, but it just, the magic, it just wasn't working. You know, she walked into your house and she was like, <laughs> fuck this whole, shit. Every time we hung out, it was, you know, when, I mean, it was either a date or going to her house. And, and then like the last girl that I dated seriously after that, you know, once again, it was one of those deals where we were always going to their house. So it's like, you know, I think she, that last girl was there for like two or three months and she only came to my house once. You know, and I could tell, she, and I and trust me, I wonder. I gave her like, I gave her the uh, the warning. <laughs> yeah, the parental suggested, parental guidance is suggested. Guidance suggested. <laughs> you have to sign this waiver before you come in the door. But uh, you know, with things being the way they are, you know, I don't want to fucking jinx. I really don't want to jinx it. But sorry, you already did that. I, I, no, like, like my job right now. You know, and I was talking to you on our way in. Like, once again, we were driving to your, towards your parents' house. And your parents live in a much more rural area than, you know, like, we're from the city. But, I mean, you know, I live in a city. You live in a city. You know, uh, we're, but as we were driving towards your, your parents' house, it significantly gets a little bit more. 
Chris Chris started us like <laughs> s- squeezing himself a little bit. Well, we drove behind, we drove behind a van that had like now see that that was unexpected. That shouldn't have happened. <laughs> that was so perfect too because like you were just mentioning like you're like Chris don't get scared we're driving into the country and it was like a van with like God bless America and live free or die America and, and Trump Pence bumper stickers and. And, and a big sign that said Benghazi, and it was like some sort of Hillary Clinton quote. And I was like, where the fuck are we going? Now, that, see, that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> that was not my intention. On our, on our way in, so I was like, uh, you know, where the fuck are we going? But, uh, you know, it's it's while we were driving here, it was sort of like, all right, I get it. you know. <laughs> and, you know, I lived, you know, when I lived in Pennsylvania, I mean, I lived south of Philly for a little while, and... Uh, that I mean, not that it was like country. <laughs> I mean, but it was definitely that was the most suburban place I ever lived. You know, I lived in one of those like housing complexes. You know, it'd be like four apartments. It looks like a house almost. Yeah. You know, and moving to Pennsylvania when I lived there for a little while, you know, people did shit that still blows my mind. The shit that happens here in Rochester. People who they'll leave their car parked with the windows down and the doors unlocked. <laughs> That's still... Well, I mean, if you could see out here, like, you can do that out here. I, and that's the whole thing, is that that blows my mind when people do that. Like, like, I don't give a fuck if I've lived here for 10 years. I'm never going to... Especially, like, I could understand... Uh, I don't so, know, like, so, basically, how let, let me tell you how it works in the country here. <laughs> <laughs> so, right now, I can have my windows open and be fine. At the, you know, at night, you should go out and obviously lock your car up because you don't know who, what Stunad's going to be driving by or whatever. Yeah, and I would assume, like, I mean, like, you have neighbors and stuff like that. Like, if someone was up to some shady business, you know, at least, like, the neighbor across the street, who is this guy, you know? Oh, I got a, I got a phone call for, like, a car being in the, in the driveway one day, and I'm like, I'm like, are we sure this isn't one of the neighbors parking in our, and sure enough, it was our neighbor, my neighbor over here, and I'm just like, I'm like, can you tell her to please not do that shit? Like, I don't mind if she parks in the parking lot, I don't mind if she parks in our driveway, but... You know, she just gotta, she's just gotta open her mouth and say something. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of like, I get like, you know, you're out here, and I, and once again, like, if, if there was some shady individual, like, if I, you know, luckily, I mean, we drove up here in your car, but if I came here in my car and I pulled into your driveway, I mean, it'd be one thing, like, okay, that person probably has a visitor, but like, like if I pulled into your driveway and it was just my car and well, not, I, like not somebody else who I get a phone car, car, you know, I could understand like someone getting a call, like, um. There's well, a, people think a... people think like you know you need to have an alarm system. I don't need no fucking alarm system. I got like people like sitting there <laughs> the like looking watch. every two seconds. <laughs> I got I got retired neighbors who got nothing but time on their hands. Exactly. <laughs> who needs like Paul? Are you across the street? Yeah, it's me. Who okay. needs home security? And let me tell you, I even had that. That's the odd thing when I lived and when I lived in that sh- even shittier complex here in Rochester where my car got broken in, uh, where the, like there weren't lights in the in the in the parking lot. Um, I did have an old lady who lived across the street who, like, she would call the cops. Like, like to, let's let's be honest. Where I live, like, all my neighbors are black or whatever. And where, when, like, people would hang out, when people, like, and sometimes, you know, it's not even, like, hanging out in the parking lot, but, like, you know, sometimes, like, if you're with a friend or whatever, like, you'll stand by your cars and just talk or whatever. Like, she'd call the cops on that shit. You know, like, I remember a couple times, like, I've been in situations where, like, you know, you, you come out and you see the cops talking to guys in the parking lot. You know, and I'll, I'll see, like, one of them is my neighbor. He's like, oh, yeah, that bitch across the street. <laughs> I'm just standing here talking to my friend. You know, and but then it's sort of like, where was that old lady when they broke into my car? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, they did. I mean, it had to be at night when they broke into my car. But, uh, you know, I mean, I guess there's nosy people in the city also. But it's just, I guess after a while, they get desensitized. Well, here, here's the funny part. So, literally, like, not even, like, a couple minutes down the street over here is uh, one of the... The truck stops, mm-hmm. um, and there's a road from here. Like I could go like two minutes. I could go there, park in their parking lot for you know workers that work there, and go in there. Uh, my brother used to work down there, and he went in, came out five minutes later. Somebody had popped his locks off his car, took his whole stereo system. Oh, but see, my brother was one of those stupid asses that had the the base system and shit. Yeah, yeah. And then he would you know he would be one of those fucking show offs and be like, yeah, look at my base system. So, you know, I, you know, it, it was like he was like a fucking magnet. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you're, you're kind of inviting a problem. You, know, you pull into the parking lot, you probably have the stereo blasting. After oh, yeah. Show the world how wonderful your sound system is. How big my dick is, yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> and it's never good music when... <laughs> 
The loudest systems always. I mean, no, no, no. My, my brother listened to some good music, but it was just like he would turn that shit on. I'm like, just turn that off, dude. You're killing my ears. Like, <laughs> Jesus. It's always funny. And my like, father, my father would be hilarious. Like he would sit there and he would literally be like, "If you come into my driveway with that shit on, I swear to God, I will punch you between your fucking <laughs> eyes." It was hilarious. And you would hear like you would hear like you would hear it down the street. You heard doom doom. And just as he got, you would hear it get really close, and then all of a sudden you're like, "What happened then?" <laughs> it was so hilarious. My brother never knew that because, like, I would, you know, I was just one, of the, you know, I was one of the kids that just, you know, I I knew my place. I would push my father to a certain point, and then I would stop because mm-hmm. I knew that it would piss him off. And it was hilarious because you would hear that, and I'm just sitting there laughing downstairs. My mother would be like, what are you laughing about? I'm like, the fact that he just turned his stuff off. Yeah, he's, he's, right? he's not stupid. He's not going to fucking piss off dad or something. Oh, like he's... That. My, my father, my father wouldn't take that shit. My father, he told me a story one time. My brother was he in the room up there, and he kept playing his music. My father was trying to sleep. He's like, Dave, turn it down. Second time, Dave, turn it down. Third time, he opens the door, punches my brother. <laughs> You just went right down. <laughs> I told you once. I told you twice. This is me telling you a third time. Turn so, it the fuck down. Oh, uh, so it's a lot of great times. I mean, you probably look out the back. You'll probably sit there and be like, "I need to have a place like this." Yeah, I mean, you know, one day I'll move out. To the- I'll move out. To- yeah, when some girl finally, you know, impregnates you, gets impregnated <laughs> by your child. That I don't, again. I don't know if I'm gonna be ready for that. Like, I have my daughter, and that's it. I don't like. Don't get me wrong. There's there's a little teeny tiny part of me that's like I kind of want a boy. You know, I mean that's like most guys. You know, I'm sort of you know. The, well, I got a boy, the, and I, and I still want another kid. You know, I, I obviously you know that, and I say that to Kelsey all the time. Like I want to have a kid, but once I hit 35, like it better happen before I turn 36 because I'm done. I don't want to have. I don't want to be like 65. And my kid just turned 20 years old. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't want that shit. I, I'm not, I've seen parents like that, and I'm just like, I'm like, I don't want to be in that position. And when I retire, I want to be able to retire and just go. I don't want to have to be paying for my kid's, my kid's college or whatever it's going to be at that point. You know, and then, to be honest with you, I don't even know if I'm going to encourage my kid to go, go, go to college. I'm, I might just say to him, look, there are, there are schools out there that are called trade school. You should go into that. My kid is like is is an art is uh, every time I see him like draw something I swear to God, this kid is gonna be an artist. He's gonna mm-hmm. have his own like fucking Family Guy show for all I know, mm-hmm. you know. Um, he like and I'm sure there's like trade schools where you can do art the whole time. He needs to go into something like that. Yeah, they have like the art, I mean my, the art my son. institute. That's like I mean I'm, I'm I'm that's the one in New York City. You know the art institute. Like you know they'll focus on you know just well, I mean there's different ones. You know there's you know drawing and then right. there's like you know. And that's what they've been saying is, is, you know, instead of going to college, you go to a trade school. It's a lot less money. You get trained to do what you want, and you get paid more money. Yeah, no bullshit humanities classes. No, no classes. bullshit. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the time of the bachelor's degree and having the Ph.D. is pretty much leaving, unless you're a doctor, a teacher, or, or a nurse. Yeah, like, I... I started, well, not a nurse. I but. started college. I wasn't given the luxury of being able to graduate. You know, just life through me curveball and shit. But it's sort of like, I've been in the, you know, I've had, let's be honest, I've had a lot of bullshit jobs for the past, <laughs> for the past eight years of my life, you know, since or since I moved up to Rochester, you know, I've had Rite Aid, Radio Shack, you know, where I'm working now, you know, my last job working at the place where, you know, calling people student loans. And, you know, I, I've had these entry level jobs where my coworkers were peak degrees, you know, I've, I, you know, where it's like, you know, people went to school and they're making the same amount as someone who just had their fucking G. And it's like, it's sad that we live in a world where shit like that isn't fucking recognized anymore. It's not, it's not appreciated, you know. Well, so, I mean, like here in Rochester, for example, there are a couple things that you will make money at. You'll make money as being a nurse. <laughs> Plenty of nursing jobs. You've seen it. Yeah. Um, call center, you don't even need a fucking college degree. Yeah. That's where, the, uh, and, and, and you know, a lot of that's going to be becoming minimum wage because as it goes up, that's what they'll matter. Um, but um, what was I going to say? Gonna so, have you know, it, it's it, there's a lot of jobs out there that don't need the college degree now. So it's like, and that's what I try, you know, my father, my father is one of these people and he's, he's the typical parent. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you got a bachelor's degree in business administration, you can go get any job that you want. No, you can't. You can't. I've had people that came straight out of college. Matter of fact, I worked with one. He and I felt bad for him too. I think he uh, his degree was like in computer 
computer systems or computer information systems or something. And uh, he comes out of college. He goes to apply for a job in his field. First question they asked him, do you have any experience? No, I'm just coming out of college. Mm. That's not what happens. We go to college. You get the experience after college. Or you do some kind of, you know, work. Something like that. Whatever. You know what I mean. Yeah. And, you know, whatever. Guy's like, sorry, I can't hire and it's and that's what's been happening a lot lately is these big jobs that these people want to go for you can't have them unless you have a fucking experience now you know that that doesn't happen in nursing that's not happening in all these other things but that's what i'm saying like it's it's ridiculous it's utterly fucking ridiculous cuz it's like you know why am i going to college why did i go to college yeah. you know what i mean like and and that's kind of why a lot of us these days and it's not because we're asking for a handout it's because we were expected this american dream and now we're sitting here going, I'm yeah. only making this much amount of money, dude. Where's my American dream? That's why people sit there and go, can you, um, can you get rid of my college loans? Yeah. It, it, just, makes, yeah. it just makes sense. You know what so I mean? You like, just want to break even. you got to work a 60-hour week. And just, I mean, I'm working right now. I'm working a 58-hour week. Um, I don't even need to be working a 50-hour week because of my other job. But, you know, it's nice to have that money. Mm. It's just, it gets, you know, it's it's like... If I would have told you at the age of 34, I'd be sitting here not making making under $20 an hour, I'd probably laugh at you. If I, if I told you that I wasn't, that I'd be living in the city instead of this house right here that we're sitting in, and this being my house, you know, my, you know, maybe taking care of my mother or whatever, I'd probably laugh at you and be like, yeah, okay, I'm not going to be living in the city. What are you talking about? Guess what, dude? Like, you know, and don't get me wrong. I like where, I like where Kelsey lives. You know, I, I like what, where it is because it's, it's a nice place. You've been there. Mm-hmm. It's it's very nice. The neighborhood, surprisingly, is a lot better than I thought it would be. Um, we've heard some horror stories, but thank God none of that happens. That has happened while we've been there. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is, is like, you know, life sucks. Shit don't, shit don't turn out the way it is. And, you know, it, it's hard for me to sit there and say to my kid, go to college now because of my experience, you know? Yeah. My experience tells me... Don't go to college. Figure out what you want to do, then go do it. It, it, You know, it is what kills me. And, uh, you know, working in these jobs that I've had recently is sort of like the employers have gotten to the point where they don't give... Employees don't give a fuck about employees. You know, they... they, It's... it's, You're like a disposable fucking... If you've... Well, you probably have noticed this. If if you notice that a lot of locally owned companies... not, Mm -hmm. not, Not so much companies, but let's say restaurants and stuff like that. That's locally owned by somebody. Have been disappearing. You want to know why that is? Because wages continue to go up and they can't spend them. They can't, they can't pay for it. And honestly, you know, like there's some restaurants that were trying to, as, as the wages were going up, they were trying to charge a surcharge for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, at restaurants that you, you have, you've heard of that shit. It's like you sit there and you look at them and like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, that, that's incredibly stupid. And there shouldn't be, that shouldn't be happening at all. You know, and it's, it's getting to the point where it's just like, I feel like we're, we're like the somber podcast today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we started out all goofy, but you know, it's like it's like you sit there and you're like you you're like okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 and with my life, and you're just sitting there going. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I like my job, I like what I'm doing. I mean, you saw how many fucking phone calls I made. Today. Yeah, that was before the before the episode. Jesus you had. Christ, like there's so many phone calls. I probably will still get another. You two literally phone calls. had like seven or eight phone calls, exactly. all work related. And I, that doesn't usually happen, mind you. That does not usually happen. <laughs> And this is this your day off, or are you work going to work later? This is my day off. <laughs> See, what you got to understand is, is when you're when you're the first assistant of a movie theater, and that's what my position is now. Uh-huh. The situation that's in is, I don't technically have a general manager. I have a, an interim general manager that oversees the building. So what happens is, is they try to get a hold of him, and I always tell them, look, try to if it's a problem that I can't tell you because he's a GM, he's the one he's gonna have to, you're gonna have to talk to, talk to him for. But if it's something really easy, don't disturb him. Just call me. Yeah. You know, he doesn't like that, but it's like, it's like, dude, you have two theaters to worry. Mm-hmm. Let me get, let me handle the small shit at this theater and just do what needs to be done. And you can handle the other things. I get paid. I get paid now. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I don't give a shit. I get paid what I'm supposed to get paid. Let me do my job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that's what I've said to him. Yeah. I'm like, it has nothing to do with you. I'm not trying to overstep my bounds, mm-hmm. but you have two theaters to worry about. Mm-hmm. Let me worry about one of those theaters. Look at the and, big pictures. Right. I mean, and we're going on about... What's to, this is July, March, April, May, June, July. Six months, six months where we've not still haven't had a GM. Oh, wow. uh, we're waiting on we're waiting on a lease. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of nerve wracking over the top of that. So it's like, 
you know, it, it, it's it's just it's really like how do I put it? It's just really really nerve wracking to have the have the lease not signed yet, but also just to be like you know you have to handle issues, and I get paid for those kinds of things, so I don't really you know. But it's funny, like when you have like when you when there's like no GM because it rem- it reminds me of like when I worked for Radio Shack. You know, we had our GM and he was a, he put his son in the best store. He was obviously you know when when there when there was a guy in in the the best store in Rockchester, there was a guy that was doing all types of because you know I, I worked at Radio Shack and it was about you know uh, their big thing at that particular time was my end of my run there was them pushing cell phones. So there was a guy in a store that was like. He didn't, he, like, when you're running like a credit check or whatever, you know, like you put a social security number or whatever and you would need some sort of proof. He would just, you know, whatever you say, it would, <laughs> you know, I walked in and said, you know, my name is uh, Chow Ming Lao you know, <laughs> and this is my social security number. You know, he's Bing not, Ling Long. <laughs> yeah. He, you know, he's not going to say, oh, let me see some ID or anything like that. The guy was doing all types of shady uh, businesses, business practices and the police, there was a fucking police investigation. The cops came to the store to fucking see what was going on. And the guy kept his job. Why? Because his sales numbers. You know, like, they didn't, he didn't give a fuck that this guy was doing illegal shit because he had the best numbers in the district. And it was sort of like, you know, and and then what happened was, I guess, after a while, they finally got rid of that GM. And we were, we were without a GM for a couple of months. And it's sort of like, it shows you if your job can be done without... You know, like, if, if, right. if, if, like, you know, if, if you're not there and the fucking whole place doesn't come crumbling down, it shows how important, you you know, how not important he was, you know, because, you know, shit, if we could get shit done without you, then how, what were you doing? You know, and it's obviously, and guys like, obviously a GM, you're, you're probably, you're the, probably, you know, in that, at that level, you're the highest, you know, you're getting paid better, more than all the people under you, yet all the other people under than you, under you are doing your job or... Or doing your job without you. It shows how fucking valuable valuable you are. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, and, and that's the one thing, like, I really think about it. Because, like, I work for Radio Shack. I work for Rite Aid. And I don't know if you know now, like, all the Rite Aids in Rochester are, are being taken over by Walgreens. They're either being taken over by Walgreens getting shut down. Or getting shut down. And, like, you know, I was on two sinking ships <laughs> as they were going down. And, and, <coughs> and it's funny because, like, the big, <coughs> the big thing at, at Rite Aid a while back couple of years ago when I was still working there where they were pushing that plenty card yep the, the plenty rewards or whatever and that was tied in with mobile and all this other shit and the funny thing is like mobile sent me a new card like the uh, plenty you know I have this my is, new card too this yeah. is like our plenty points but you know the Rite Aid part doesn't exist anymore and well like, that's what happened was is Walgreens didn't want to have anything to do with it yeah. but see what, I, what I'm interested to know what I'm interested to see now is Walgreens to, is Walgreens said that they're not going to sell cigarettes anymore? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, right? I used to was selling cigarettes, so it's going to be interesting to see if you go into those now Walgreens, are they selling cigarettes or are they selling? I mean, they'll probably keep right it on the on the wall and like you know use that to like. Oh. I've seen some. <laughs> I've seen some where it's like Rite Aid with a Walgreens pharmacy. Yeah, that's yeah, that's and that's why I think they're going to keep that. So it's sort of like. And that's like yeah, the the, the pharmacy is technically Walgreens, and because I, like I was re- I was renewing my daughter's medicine or whatever, and like when I called them, like thank you for calling, you know, right, right, Aid now Walgreens, you know, <laughs> so, well, right, Aid Walgreens pharmacy, and I, like and that and mind you, that was a store I worked at, <laughs> and it's so funny to go in the you know. And I love it because, like, you know, when I worked at Rite Aid, like, my last manager, not my my first manager, he was a good guy. We were just in a bad neighborhood. <laughs> and I think, you know, him being a good guy was the only reason that store, like, the only reason I stood with that company for so long because I had a good manager. And, you know, and I was, I, they always dangled that fucking carrot in front of me, like, oh, we're going to transfer you to a nice store. We're going to transfer you to a nice store. You know, and then, you know. <laughs> oh, here's a shitty store. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm like, you know, I kept, I, you know, until uh, I got fucking punched in the mouth by a fucking shoplifter, you know. And, I, and the funny thing is, I had that, I had the video, I copied it on D, or I copied the video file. So I want to release that. If I know when I find it, I'm gonna fucking put it on on, on so YouTube. So I, I there's I kind of feel what you're I, I kind of see what you're saying too because like a lot of the Regals that are starting to close now they were they were already slated to close pretty much they I guess they had already planned on them closing so a lot of them aren't like oh the the evil Sinnoh world came from the United Kingdom mm-hmm. and just closed everything that's not what happened um, not yet at least <laughs> but. <clears throat> What they've been doing, like with our company, is they've been they've been what they do is they go to the they go to let's say Joe Schmo owns the plaza, 
that the, the, the Regal's in, or the mall. You willing to give us any money to uh, upgrade our theater? No. You willing to ro- lo- lower our rent? No. Matter of fact, we want to raise it. Oh, okay. Well, uh, fuck you. Have a nice day. We're done. Now, a lot of the time when they do that and they walk away, the mall or the plaza will come back and be, wait, wait, wait. wait. Here's some money. <laughs> Stay <laughs> here because you're the one that makes the most money here. Don't go anywhere, please. But then, and then all of a sudden you have these, but then you have like, um, some places and companies are like, no, fuck you. We're not doing shit. We're not lowering your rent. We're not giving you any money for towards your seats. Fuck you. If you leave, you leave. A lot of the times, that's what's what's been happening. You know, I, I understand why, and that's the smart way that not just Regal is, is doing it, or Cineworld, Cineworld, Cineworld Regal, whatever you want to call it now. But like Cinemark's doing the same thing, AMC's doing the same thing. If these companies don't want to spend the money to help them renovate their theaters, bye bye. Yeah. You know, and it's really interesting too. I found out that a lot of the that all of our theaters, like for the one in Henrietta, we used to own that, but then we sold it to a company and just rent it for. Them. And I sat there and I went. Why? Why would you do that? Oh, well, we needed the equity. Dude, if you would have done, if you wouldn't have kept that under our umbrella, you could have just upgraded seats and whatever. Now you got some asshole that doesn't want to give you any money, and you know damn well you're not going to get rid of that theater. It does well in Henrietta. So, you know. So I can understand. I mean, like, the, there's a Rite Aid that used to, that I would drive by uh, going towards my job that closed. The one farther down. Uh, that one turned into a uh, Walgreens, completely turned into a Walgreens. So, I mean, I was just sitting there thinking to myself, like, <clears throat> they're going to play this bullshit now. <laughs> yeah. They're going to play this bullshit where they're like, oh, yeah, we're not going to take away your jobs. Oh, by the way, we're closing, like, five stores. You know? yeah. and, and kind of, I mean, can we talk about, we'll get we'll get into it more in the second half of the show with the, the Oscar. But, uh, Durrell, can we talk about Durrell? Or... <laughs> I, 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 would, I would think that he would, I, I will say that he got... He got laid off. He got laid off, but not for him personally. Yeah, no, no. He got laid off, the, like, the, the the center that he worked at. I don't want to talk about what where he, he worked and what he does. I'll let him do that. Yeah, no, yeah. But I want him to shit on the company, because I want him to just go off, because he's been waiting to do that. But that's the whole thing, is that so. it, it's, it's in the exact same vein of, like, here's a company that was showing a lot of, like, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, disdain for its customer. I mean, you know, you know, it's a company that's acting like it don't give a fuck, and then... You know, unfortunately, Darrell is one of those victims of the shit that's going on where, you know, I mean, it's not just him. It's not like he told his boss, go fuck yourself or something like that. Like, you know, they so, shut down the whole center. Look, I don't want to get too political today, but, you know, one of the things that I think Trump is missing the mark on is, first of all, we don't need a trade war. What we need is these jobs coming. Mm-hmm. So why not do what we should be doing? Incentivize these companies to stay here. And then... Do exactly what you said, which I completely fucking agree with. By the way, there are some things I agree with with Trump that that we need to do. Not the way that he does it, but the way that the things. Like for example, he was talking about. I I, I swear to God, he said this during the during the um, the primaries. Oh. Yeah, campaign primaries, whatever. Um, he was saying that uh, we should any company that leaves, we should tax them, mm. and that if they try to bring things in, we should tax them too. I think that's a good idea. But I think that we need to implement that in a different way. You know, we should reward companies for keeping their jobs here. And we should, we should, you know, tax the shit out of companies that don't. I agree completely with that. If Ford wants to take all of their shit and put it in, in Mexico, fuck them. They have to pay a tax to bring it back in. I agree with that. I think that's a, that's a good idea. Um, but I also think that, for example, I shouldn't have to call... I shouldn't call my cable company and fuck in here... Welcome to the Quickie Mart. How may I help you? <laughs> and, I, and I'm not trying to... Again, I'm not trying the to be racist. The opinions of Paul Priscilla do not necessarily <laughs> represent two streamers in one podcast. I'm not trying to be racist or anything, but there was a time there where we all of a sudden decided to bring all those call center jobs back. Mm. And now it feels like some of them are starting to creep away back overseas. And, you know, I, I understand companies need to save money, but I would rather talk to some... If I call Discover, for example, uh-huh. every single time, Hey, this is Shaniqua in Alabama talking to you today. How can I help you? I'm talking to a regular human being on the phone that's from, from the United States of America. Mm. I'm not talking to somebody that doesn't understand the English language or barely understands it. It's just, you know, it's, it's to the point where I'm like, and obviously Trump, you've seen Trump has pretty much destroyed us, really. I mean, we're kind of, I, I mean, I, I didn't think he would be that damaging in two years and holy shit. We are just like... <laughs> Every country's like looking at us going, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> like, 
Yeah. Everybody, we have a trade war against everybody. It's just, you know, I, I, I don't want that. What I want is our country to be what we were before. Just, we need to, if we're going to bring jobs here, or keep jobs here, we need to do it in a smart way. You know, and then if somebody, if we give, like, for example, somebody builds something here in Rochester, and we give them tax and, you know, no taxes until a certain time, if they don't, if they leave within that period, they have to pay a penalty. And there was a, in Batavia over here, there was some uh, cheese factory, if you remember, mm-hmm. they put in. Got all these tax incentives and everything. Two or three years later, gone. Yeah. So, it's like, it's like, hello, like, if you're going to do that and I build a plant for you, and I just use taxpayer money, you know. Yeah, and can we talk about real quick, like, I mean, this this popped up in the news, like, literally right before, right as we started recording. Uh, the Justice Department announces 12 Russian, 12 Russians, yeah. 12 Russian intelligence officers uh, for hacking. And this is uh, off of Yahoo.com. So here's, uh, yeah, just a, you know, for, uh, here's the sad thing. Here's the sad thing. People can sit there and, and shit on Hillary Clinton as much as they want. They can make fun of her. They can do whatever. But if you look at that one debate where she's literally sat there and said, Trump is going to do this, this, and this. Every fucking thing that she said that he would do, he fucking has done. And I don't mean these in good ways. I mean these in bad ways. So no matter what, you can't say that that woman was not fucking right about how bad Trump was going to be. And I got to tell you something, man. They, they're trying to shit on this one FBI worker that Mueller let go because he was texting stuff and he didn't want the, the appearance of bias. Mm-hmm. That's why he got rid of him. And I commend him for doing that. This guy was on the Hillary and Clinton investigation. He literally said, why are we not indicting her? Why are we not bringing in witnesses? So wait a minute, wait a minute. You Republicans are attacking this FBI worker, yet he's he was on your side at one point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Fucking sitting there saying... It's all good when he was going after Hillary. But, but And then you're yelling at him for going after Hillary. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. Time out. Time out. They're doing this shit, too. And I'm like, I'm sitting there, like, literally. That's why I can't watch news all the time now. I'm just like, time out. Time out. Wait a minute. It drives you to drink, man. It drives you. You literally, you're like, you're like, dude, I, I, at 34 years old, I, I can say that I am an intelligent human being. And when I see something so stupid that it makes my, it blows my mind, I sit there and I go, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> <coughs> literally, literally seeing these people fucking yelling at somebody for well, not even that. Trump, Trump fucking sits there and and fires the FBI director because he improperly handled the Hillary Clinton investigation. What? Wait, wait, time out. Wait, wait. So you just fired the FBI guy for improperly handling an investigation against your opponent, but it helped you. What? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm just sitting there going. I'm I'm just like sitting here going. I don't even know anymore. I just uh, yeah. But then he came after Trump, and all of a sudden it's a problem. You know, <laughs> you don't. Dude, it's like like I would love. I'll, I'll be honest with you. If I was a if I was if I worked out on a daily basis and I could whoop anybody's ass, mm-hmm. I would go buy one of those fuck Trump shirts uh-huh. and wear that shit all the time, <laughs> and wait and see if some motherfucker comes up to me. Literally, yeah. because seriously, I would love to wear one of those shirts. Can I wear that on the public? No. Because some dumb fuck will jump me for no goddamn reason other than I said fuck Trump. And then um, in other... I mean, don't, I, I could get into this, but you know, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, well, it's just... I mean, I, I kind of want to talk about something else, but, you know, this thing about the Russians hacking the election, I think there's a fucking... I think there's a goal here to fucking destabilize you. Like, I, I think there's... I think, I, Trump's already done that, so well, No, exactly. <laughs> no, by doing that, like, like, them putting this fucking idiot in power... Is sort of like you know they're gonna that like like you know like see, if, the if problem you, is you know if see, you want something like if you want a business to shut down you 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 get the you you get a new boss and you hire a fucking idiot you know like <laughs> you well, know they implode because let me tell you let me tell you the greatest thing that we put in place when we when we formed this was the three branches of government mm-hmm. the executive the judicial the legislative 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 I could wipe my ass with right now <laughs> executive I could wipe my ass with his ass too um, judicial that might get fucked up by the next Supreme Court. Um, I don't know. I'm more of... I don't know. I just think that at this point, we need to change. You know? And I hate to say this. I hate to say this, but Mueller needs to fucking hurry up and indict this. Way too much shit is going on and it needs to change. 
But, okay, now, I just want to talk about this story real quick. Stormy Daniels was arrested, and last, no, excuse me, two nights ago. Yeah, why was she in the... For motorboating, undercover cops, a strip club in Columbus, Ohio. This is NBCNews.com. And, uh, but I love it that... Wasn't, mo- it, wasn't it mistaken identity, though, or something? I don't know, but it's just sort of saying that, like... You know, motorboating. Okay, like, I guess she put her tits on the guys. I'm assuming. I'm assuming they say motorboating that she probably put her tits on their face. But like here, we have a president bragging about grabbing women by the pussy, <laughs> literally talking about grabbing people who did. Who, who, who did and not obviously guys at a strip club aren't asking. You know, in theory, guys at a strip club. Are not asking to have tits shoved in their face, but I mean, I think you kind of, you know, they were asking for it. <laughs> but it's sort of yeah, like, but I think that was. When it's if like, I remember correctly, president was... brags about grabbing people by the pussy, but then you know, this one gets her, you know, motor ba- motorboats undercover cops and gets arrested. It just it, it blows my mind on, on the fucking hypocrisy of the whole thing. But uh, I think with that, we'll be back with more dick and fart joke. This episode of Two Strangers, One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. 1115 East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number 8. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Ah, necrophilia. Ah, ah, ah. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything Dude, that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Click and Hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. You can leave the pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient, getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit wwwclick the letter n hitcom That's clickandhit.com. And now for listeners of Two Strangers, One Podcast, you can use promo code STRANGERS and receive 10% off your purchase at clickandhit.com. That's promo code STRANGERS for 10% off your purchase. And we're back. All right, so what I wanted to save this for the second half of the show, we had mentioned uh, Darrell real quick. So uh, it's time for our Oscar letter. You know, we, we we should just make like a like a, a musical intro for this. At this point. <laughs> I need to work it's on the one. Oscar letter, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so and, and and once again, we I like I literally opened this right before the, the Oscar. Episode. You better have said something good about me, or I'm gonna fucking kill you. Uh, I think. Let me see. Yeah. Or I buy a piece of shit again. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Chris. Thank God. Glory, glory, hallelujah. The boys are back. <laughs> 
And what makes it so much better is that pistol packing Urkel is not able to join the show. I felt so re- relieved and excited. Like like when you find that twenty dollar bill in your pocket that you totally forgot about. Listening to Rel listening to Darrell talking about his martial arts stuff made me automatically think of him as ghost dog. <laughs> Does Darrell have a lazy eye too? <laughs> oh, God. I mean I've never no, no, well, I've seen him on video. He doesn't have a lazy eye. But I think he's talking about uh, Forrest Whitaker having a lazy eye. Um, oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, I won't be doing much bashing today because I'm just so happy the past <laughs> couple episodes. Uh, uh, episodes, I get to hear the slackers are back. Audio better, content better, just happy and content. No horrid audio, amateur, <laughs> amateurly spliced together from your commute. And an obviously mentally deficient Austin. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, no more of that horrid, horrid... I'm just going to use some alcohol right now. <laughs> and Paul's putting on a, a hand sanitizer. Yep. <laughs> no more of that horrid, horrid cock turtling gin. <laughs> I mean the I need a little bit more of this. That laugh. <laughs> I swear I would go gay before fucking that. I mean, wow. Yeah, I mean, we're, okay, we're laughing. I... I I, I, you know, I, I mean, jeez, I, Oscar, come after me! Don't, don't go, go, don't go bashing. Uh, I mean, I'm reading it and we're laughing. It's a little <laughs> fucked up, but I mean, you know, in a all, in all fairness, you know, I'm going to read the letter. All right, so um, I let this email go with no insults, Chris. I'll give you a pass. Like I said before, your life makes me feel good about my own. I live in a third world country. Uh, pretty much, I have a job, car, Wi-Fi, and pussy. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be Oscar if I didn't let at least get. Uh, was, eh, I wouldn't be if I didn't at least get one jab in. I have one nerdy comment, and maybe Paul knows it. I recently found by accident Transformers: Power Power of the Primes and some other title variations. Mm. There are a few seasons that I had to go deep <coughs> digging to find the older episode. I'm a huge G1 fanboy, and this is the closest thing I can find that gives me some satisfaction and recollection of the great G1 series and the 1986 movie. Megatron can actually transform into a gun. Uh, damn, that was great to see. Anyway, do you guys know of the series? Yes. Can, can Paul pull some facts out of his anime knowledge about this? If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch and tell me what you think. Uh, happy you guys are back, and thanks for Darrell. Uh, thanks. Yeah, happy <laughs> Happy you guys are back, and thanks for Darrell, the pistol-packing <clears throat> ghost dog. <laughs> Oscar. Um, all right, so to that, that last bit about the power of the primes... Is that the one? Is that the one that's going on that they play on Tumblr, but they also it's on. It was on Go ninety. Well, Go ninety is no is yeah, no more. Yeah, no more. I I forgot. But it's, it's on, on Machinima. Uh, yes, it's, it's Machinima. It's it's on. Tum- they say it's on Tumblr, but I'm just like, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, actually, the all right now, the Power <laughs> of the Primes, and it's sad because I haven't been watching. I, I want to say Power of the Primes is either season three or season season four. two or three. Yeah, yeah because um, the first season. Was actually, uh, and if you go back, I mean, you go way back in our in our history, um, and I'm pretty sure Oscar goes that back. Uh, we had an interview with the writer George Kirsten, who also created Megas XL. Um, this was way before he did he did that show. But if you follow George Kirsten, K R S T I C, he is a <coughs> diehard Transformers fan. Right. He, he's he he worked for at that particular time he worked for a Titmouse Animation. Uh, you know the same people who gave us you know Venture Brothers and Metalocalypse, and a bunch of other cool shows, you know, Motor City. Um, one of the one of the things George does he likes playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So he's putting together like this like for the lack of a better term a clubhouse for guys to come and play Dungeons and Dragons. And he shows he puts up his and he you know he's a big <coughs> kid he puts he puts his displays of toys and he literally has like this display case. That has, and I'm not exaggerating here, 50 Optimus Primes. In. And it's like 50 variations. And there's big ones and there's little ones and ones that are fucking weird colors. And, you know, some sort of like funky variant where they like, it would be like, you know, if there was like a promotion with like Kmart with Optimus Prime. Like Optimus Prime pulling a Kmart trailer or whatever. Um, <coughs> and that's just Optimus Prime. He has a, 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 one like that with Batman. He has another one. Uh, if you go on his Instagram, it's it's ridiculous. Like he, he's a giant, giant nerd. And uh, I had it. We had it. Oh no, we weren't there. I'm sorry. No, you weren't there that year. I interviewed. Him. Uh, no, 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 I wasn't. No. And and that's he came to New York Comic Con to uh, interview uh, to be, be part of the Transformers Hasbro panel, and that was right when they were doing the first season of the the Power of the Primes. And so 
I watched it. Um, <clears throat> the animation style is a little odd because it's not fluid animation. It's sort of like it's weird. Uh, I mean, then again, I haven't seen the new Power of the Prime season, but that first season, it was weird where they kind of had... Um, it's a weird... I don't want to say... It's not stop motion, but it was it was animated in a weird way where it's not fluid. It's sort of like where at, traditional animation is one, you know, 24 frames a second. This was This was like six frame and it was a lot slower than the traditional animation but i think that kept production costs down um hasbro was putting it out there because they were really pushing their um their combiners like all the uh right. and, yeah. you know it was called the first the, the i believe the first series the first season was called combiner war and it was you know all about you know devastator and menasaur and predaking and all the all the the what they call the gestalt transports you know all the robots that are made from a bunch of little robots to become one big one um and then the the series went on. I remember at one season. That's why I have a feeling it's season three now because in season two, John Bailey, the the voice of well, first he's part of our intro and he does uh, the honest trailers voice. He he's known for years to be doing. He does Optimus Prime. I, I think like even uh, Sketch when I did a when I did Sketch came on an episode once. The Sketch said that he worked with John Bailey. I mean it was all over the internet and doing voice acting. But <coughs> I think he said he worked with John Bailey on a, on a Transformers thing. Um, cause there was a, there was a YouTuber called Dr. Schmoove or something like that, where he was, he was doing like, he was taking old Transformer episodes and redubbing them. Right. And I think John Bailey worked with him. So it's funny, like John, ba- John Bailey, who at one point was doing Optimus Prime impressions for YouTube videos was actually hired by Hasbro. Cause I think like, I think season one, they got Peter Cullen. Then season two, I think the budget kind of dropped a little bit, so they got John Bailey. But I think season three, I think they got Peter Cullen back. And it's like, you know, if you're going to lose your job, at least you're losing your job to the right, main right, fucking right, right, dude. Right, yeah. um, so, oddly enough, I'm, it's sad that, no, I haven't seen Power of the Primes. I haven't uh, I haven't followed up. I mean, I'm I've, aware of its history. I've been watching on and off. This this actual season, I watched the first three episodes. I have, I, I'm so busy, dude, I don't even get to watch I haven't even watched the next Vol- Voltron uh, thing that came out at the beginning of June. I, um... And uh, the one thing that I found interesting about it is now Optimus Primal. And then it showed a preview the other day for the last episode <clears throat> that it looks like um, Optimus Primal became... I can't think of what, what his name was. But he had... It was Optimus Primal and Optimus Prime together. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so there was that. I was like, oh, so this is kind of following a Beast War. Yeah, I think... Thing. Well, because obviously the first two seasons was sort of... was. Playing to the G1 audience, you know, and there's, you know, and, that, and a lot of people were upset. Yeah, and the funny thing is, like, I'm I'm a G1 person, and I didn't necessarily like Beast Wars when it first came out. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> you know, stop yeah. fucking with my. But I think I and, and now it's sort of weird because I I did get into it eventually, and I had yeah, like, Beast Wars. I had like the first like two seasons on, on <clears throat> DVD. I think I sold it at one. Beast Wars was one of those that was. It's a classic Transformer series that was wonderful. You know, people shit on Beast Machines. I don't think Beast Machines destroyed what was what Beast Wars had kind of done. I mean, it could have been there could have been better things going on with it, I think, but at the end of the day, I think it also added another fabric on top of the Transformer series. So, <coughs> I don't know. I'm trying to remember like I'm, I'm trying to see I like I'm I'm looking up the Power of the Primes uh, deal now. Um, Machinima is Wikipedia. Okay, I was say it's the third and final entry into the Prime Wars trilogy. The Power of the Prime. Uh, the first one was Combiner Wars. Second one was with with was with uh, Peter Cullen. Yeah, the second one. Tyler. Actually, um, uh, what's his name? I don't know if he's still involved in it, but um, Frank Welker. Oh no. Um, Power Ranger, Green Ranger. Oh, Dave, uh, Jason David Frank. Uh-huh. I think he was one of the voices, and it was either. One of the series, or he still is as one of the characters. Yeah, and I'm looking right now at <coughs> well, one of your one of your recent interviews from your other podcast, the Tsunami Faithful, uh, Carrie Walgren. Oh, Carrie Walgren is, is is in the in the episode also. Oh wow, wow. It, it's funny they had it says Unicron is played by. Judd oh, you Nelson. pay attention to my podcast. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you know I, I follow as much as I can. Uh, it says his Chris is probably in the background like why can't you guess from my podcast like that. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, she's pretty, and I would love to. Dude, when I get rid of my second job, I will work harder to get guests for our pies, okay? It's kind of hard. <laughs> it's hard enough to fucking hunt down these people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was... The truth of the matter is, is I've, <clears throat> I've found a contact where I can get things easier now. I don't really want to go into it, who that is and where, for what company that is, but 
now that I have that contact, I can when something comes up for tsunami, I can automate. So it's been wonderful. <laughs> now, uh, I, I, once again, I haven't. I really got to get into it. Uh, Ron Perlman, the guy who plays Hellboy, does the voice of Optimus. And I know he's done voices before. Yeah. You know, that's that's fucking awesome. Gee, I got to get into this. <laughs> I just haven't, it's I haven't free, had the time. It, it is know? free, too. Yeah. And so, shit. Thanks for turning me. And it's funny. And, you know, and I consider myself such a fucking diehard Transformers fan. And, and I haven't... You're, you're a big nerd, too, about yeah. it, so. Yeah. Wow. This is so... I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at all See, the... See, Oscar, you gave him a nerd gas. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh... Let me see. I'm anything. I don't know. It feels like. Uh, let's see where oh, I think nerdy. I'm trying to think if there's anything nerdy. Um, there is something I do want to talk about because I, I really didn't talk a, talk about this on the podcast. So George, not George, um, Gendy. Well, actually, I can talk about two things. Gendy Tartofsky. So I posted an article on TinoFavor.com, which I think you guys should read. First of all, no, it does. It's not about a second season of Symbiotic. Type. Well, it kind of is. <laughs> um, what I mean by that is, is he finally, he kind of, this is the first time I've, I've literally seen him say in an interview, in a written interview, that they had 10 more episodes written for, for, symbi- symbi- for Symbiotic Titan. Um, he said the reason this came up was, is <clears throat> the person at Sci-Fi that interviewed him, and thank you, Sci-Fi, thank you for doing this. Um, he, all he asked him was, is what was your worst experience in the cartoon, do, in doing cartoons? Uh-huh. And he talked about how... Symbiotic Titan was the worst time because it got canceled, and this, that was the first time that any of his shows ever. Oh wow! Yeah, and you know the one thing that I've always been saying is is that <clears throat> when a show gets written off, sometimes what happens is is like with the the creators of SWAT Kids, you can if something gets written off, it's technically written off, but if the creators of the show have special rights in their contract, they can come back and do more episodes or do a different series. So. I've always said that I think that Gendy has the rights to kind of come back and do that. I we we don't know that for sure. We know that Cartoon Network wrote them off, but we don't know if Gendy has the right to do some more or maybe do like a different symbiotic series. The point that I'm trying to make is is like it's interesting to hear him talk about that kind of stuff, and um, you should really go check out that article that I wrote up. It, it's basically just explaining. Basically, just uh, highlighting the, the portion of that interview, and then you should go to Sci-Fi and obviously read the. Interview. It's nothing. Uh, the rest of it's nothing really special. It's just you know, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> but speaking of Gendy, he was talking about how he would like to do another series, and it's kind of funny because about a month ago we found out uh, Cartoon. I want to say it was Cartoon Network schedules uh, brought up this link, and it said. It was, when you file for a trademark, it publicly goes out. So people see it. So Cartoon Network, which, Cartoon Network, I need to explain this to some people. Cartoon Network being the, see, Adult Swim and Cartoon Network are, are connected. But what happens is, is whenever Cartoon Network, like, Adult Swim wants to do some things, most of the time they will file a copyright using car- Cartoon Network. So Cartoon Network filed for a copyright called Gendy Tarvakovsky's Primal. Okay, yeah, you mentioned that the last episode. Did I mention that? Yeah. <clears throat> So I'm interested, in, I'm, I'm really interested in waiting to see what that's all about. And I'm hoping and I'm praying that this will, you know, be, it'll, it'll be a, a really good show. I don't know. I will just have to see it. Yeah. And I'm trying to, I, I was, I, I was looking, um, cause there was, there, there was some news, I, like I kind of, something sparked my, my, um, the next Star Wars movie, there's, there's, there's a rumor <coughs> right now that Carrie, and I, I love it because all the, and once again, this is all internet spoilers and rumors. And oh, stuff we like can that. talk about that actually. What's his name? Lando's coming back. Uh, Lando Calrissian. Uh, yes. uh, 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 Billy Billy D. Williams. Yes. Billy D. Williams is coming back, which is going to be interesting because it's sort of like he's the last cowboy. <laughs> you know, what I'm like you know, he liked Leia, and 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 oh no, what am I saying? Oh, Leia's. Oh no, wait, no. Well, see, in the movie, I mean, Leia's technically still alive. You know, uh, yeah, technically. <laughs> and it's sort of weird. where, like. You know, when he first met Leia, he's all flirting with her, even though that was like his boy's, you know, his boy's girl or whatever. Right. And so, like, it, I wonder if they're going to kind of play on that or, or like, you know, well, now that Han's gone, <laughs> now's my chance, you know? Um, no, I honestly think, I honestly think what they're going to try to do with him is he's going to kind of be, he's going to kind of be the guy that puts the pieces back. I yeah. think he's going to be the guy that they go to and they say, because <laughs> you don't got Han, you don't got Luke, you don't got whatever. You know, and he's going to come back and he's going to be like, look, this is, you guys are now the Rebel Alliance. You need, this is your chance to end this once and for all. 
It's time for you to step up and do what you need to do. And let's bring peace to this universe. But, and the, the other interesting thing that's going to be, and I hope, I, I really hope that they do this because I think because of the earlier trilogy, it makes sense to do this, is it should be called Rise of the Jedi. And at the, somewhere in the film, you just see an army of fucking Jedi just taking on Sith. I think that would just be some fucking awesome things. The one thing that I, that I don't like that's canon that they've never introduced into the movies. There's two things. Number one, Ahsoka. And number two is... Um, one's Ahsoka, and one's these Inquisitors that aren't quite Sith, but they are. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see more of that. I'd like to see the, the Knights of Ren show back. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is that, like, <coughs> Star Wars at one point, like, on the website, there were pictures of the Knights of Ren. Just, like, in the two, two movies so far, and that hasn't been, you know, they haven't really touched it. Um... I find it what I what I find very interesting is they put they put which is very unpopular obviously because they're stupid change the ending change the ending um, you know what's his name is now in charge of the whole thing and that's what ultimately Darth Vader wanted to be was in charge of the whole empire now obviously okay. Solo's kid is now the in charge of the whole first order which is basically the empire Kylo Ren yeah so I'm just interested to see how that's going to What's going to happen? I, I hope, number one, they don't start making another big kill. People are just going to get pissed. Or whatever, they whatever Death Star, uh, Planet Killer, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Whatever. Um, I hope they don't do that again. Um, I hope that they kind of... I hope they bring back in... I hope that they... Uh, I, what I really want to see, and I, I, I've always said this since they started making this, I always I wanted to see a scene... This is where you bring Christian... Christian Hayden Christensen? Hayden Christensen back. I just want a scene where him and Ewan McGregor. What, what's his oh, no. name? Not, uh, it's it's what is his real name? It's not Kylo Ren. It's um, Ben Solo. Ben Solo, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I, I want to see them have a conversation. I want to see the now like reformed, obviously Anakin Skywalker, uh-huh. basically talking to. In you know, I think that would be. An well, yeah, we're saying like you know, you're worshiping me at my worst, point, my lowest. You know, saying like right. like I, I see I see what you're following because I've been on that path. But the guy that you're remembering you isn't gotta, me anymore. You got to remember, <laughs> Ben is even though Ben is leading this is leading this army now. Mm-hmm. He's still in. He's still doing this in between evil and light. He's not like Darth Vader, where he was at one point just dark. You know, yeah, he came back to the light, but he was still he. At one point, Darth Vader was just dark. Mm-hmm. He was dark side, no matter what. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to see him. I want to see that come. back. What I would like to see is for them to kind of. Bring this full circle, you know, and I kind of see, I, I kind of see that happening. I obviously probably Ben Solo is going to die. Obviously, I would, I would think so. Well, I'm, or maybe, I mean, look, and this is, you know, like his last redeem. It, okay, and he, I, I, I agree with you that maybe he'll die, but he'll sort of redeem himself, sort of the way like he'll. He'll set the charges that blows up the first order. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying or, or like he'll, you know, he'll do the thing where like, you know, the, all the 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 first orders, you know, all the command ships of the first order, all the commanders are on this ship. I'm gonna crash this ship into the fucking side of a moon or something like that. Like, but see, the, know, the, I'm gonna destabilize the first order. Here's by here's the thing, like taking up ship. <laughs> at the end of this movie, uh-huh. we'll we'll probably finally figure out who the Jedi was that they ultimately were talking about. That would bring balance to the four. Because if it is, if it is, what's her name? Ray. Um, Ray. Then you know what I mean. Now we get to see what that is. The only thing that I didn't like about Ray was is they kind of copped out on a story. I think they could have done a little bit more with was that all oh, your parents are just well. That, and that that brings me right to my, the, the story I wanted to tell. Um, the uh, the the rumor is is that they're bringing Carrie Russell. Uh, to to be in the next Star Wars. Now, Carrie Russell, she was on that show Felicity, which yes. was J.J. Abrams' first TV show. Right. So first, I mean, there's that first obvious link that he's worked with her, and hey, you know, if he wants to give her work, hey, more power to her. But I like that him, if he makes her raise mom, it's a fuck you to Ryan Johnson. Because, you, know, you know, like Ryan Johnson, like, you know, oh, her parents are nobody. I mean, unless, you know, unless Kerry Russell's playing like a, a, an alcoholic, you know, because like, it's like, oh, your parents were drunk chaters. They were nothing. I would, like, I would like it to be a surprise that her... That her mother is really a Jedi, or her father was, or whatever. Yeah, she has I think sort of I honestly lineage. think what we haven't, what we've been kind of missing, is something that I think should have happened. That should have, and it, it, it probably should have happened in like in Rebels, and maybe maybe it'll happen in the next animated series they do. But I'd kind of like to see. 
obviously where a Sith and a Jedi get together. And they don't, they don't, <laughs> obviously, Fuck. I mean, but, but think about this, but think about this a for a second. Forced example. sex scene. There, <laughs> JJ Abrams, there was, episode 9 is going to be R-rated. No. Hey, Star Trek's going to be R-rated. Um, mm-hmm. There's, um, and the reason I say this is because there's, what am I trying to think? A Sith and a... So there, there was a Dark Lord, and this is, I don't know if this is canon, but one of the stories was there was this Dark Lord... Where he kind of, uh, where he, what was, he kind of was in the background. He didn't really do anything. He invented a lot of things for the dark side of the force. Mm. Um, and I think it would be interesting to see that happen where, like, a Sith and a, and a Jedi got together. You know, the, say, like, the Sith was, was hunting down all these Jedi for, he was an Inquisitor for the, the Empire. Trying to hunt down all these, all these Jedi, and he falls in love with this girl. And, you know, she happens to be a Jedi. And, and he's, he's he's forced to basically choose between the two. And he's able to escape and they're able to get away. But, and what happens is, is they obviously have a child and this is Rey. And because of Rey, because of what happened, you know, they get into a situation where they have to abandon Rey somewhere. Because if they don't, she's going to get killed. And they end up getting killed in the, in the, yeah. the thing. I know that's a lot of information and that, that may sound stupid, but... I've always really wanted to see. It's that. sort of like like they if like they like if this both sides will chase this child right like you know so we kind of have to but we, here's we the have thing. to leave her anonymously like, on a planet. We've always where... seen, but see that's the thing, Chris. What I'm trying to ultimately get to is we've always seen this picture. I've always seen this picture when even when I was younger, they show this picture of the light side, they show this picture of the dark side, and then there's this balance in the middle, mm-hmm. this balanced Jedi that can use both powers, but is no but is not evil nor nor good. They just are there, they take care of what needs to be taken care of, and then they leave. So, my thing is, is could that be what she is ultimately going to be? Is this Jedi that is of a new, balanced order that is no is not just Jedi, but Sith, and protects the universe, this universe now, from anything that could come its way? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, you know... There is no ultimately big Sith Lord anymore. Mm. There's just this kid named Ben Solo that's leading the, the, the you know. Mm. Now that we don't have that, guess what? It's time to do what we need to do. Get, get these fuckers out of the universe and, yeah. you know. And I, hopefully they go back to Coruscant because I think that they should have, I think that that would be a great callback. To... Well, I mean, I, I mean, someone had mentioned this and it cool is that like, let's just say there were the Knights of Ren. Because they established, they said in the movie, the Knights of Ren. That they were out doing their own fucking dirty deeds while all like we were we're watching episodes seven and eight, but the Knights of Ren were out handling shit for Kylo Ren, you know. And now that he's in power, like we would see at least in the beginning of the movie, where it's almost like a Knights of the Round Table, where he's like he's he's like an evil King Arthur, where he sits at the head of the table and all the Knights of Ren sit there also, and they're all yeah. like sort of badass. You know, I mean, I, I kind of want to see that. You know, they could have been out doing all types, you know, because we're only, I think when we see the movies, we only see one little segment, you know. They you could know, be and, out but see, here's, here's not to interrupt you, question. but I was thinking, like, I think what's going to end up happening if they do this the right way, this is going to be several years later. Yeah, so that way they jump, can yeah. So that way they can kill off Leia, kind of, and just say, like, she died of natural causes. Yeah. And they can, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're pretty much because they lost her. You know, they're all kind of just sitting there with their, you know, their thumbs up their asses going, I don't know what the fuck to do. Yeah. And then Lando comes along and says, look, look, get off your asses. Let's do what we need to do. You, Ray, need to go find some Jedi. I don't care what you need to do. You need to go find them. You need to train them. And you need to, why don't, I'm not a master. Are you not a master? Or are you a master? It's what of Luke. And, and, and look, and I, you know, he probably looked at him and be like, and be like, Luke wasn't a master. Luke became a master and nobody deemed him a master. Yeah. He just became a master. They don't grant you the role. You, you can just, sit on this council, but we don't grant you the, the, the you, you know, He'll look master. at her and be like, I heard you moved a mountain, basically. Uh, I think you're a Jedi master. Go get some people. So yeah, And I, and, and I, I kind of heard this other rumor where I kind of hope they eventually say that, like, you know, the Darth Plagueis they mentioned in episode three. Could be. You know, and so... Uh, but I think uh, I think we're coming up on our time here. Yeah, so, so let's uh, wrap it up. That's what That's she said. What she said. 
Uh, please visit Two Strangers One Podcast net where you can find all things show related. You can find links to our uh, iTunes page. So if you, have, if you have an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod, you can download them and subscribe to us on all those devices. If you don't have an OS device, Mac OS device, you can. Tr- if you have an Android phone, you can listen to us on the Stitcher app. That's S T I T C H E R, the Stitcher app for Android devices. Uh, listen offline. Listen later. Download when you're in Wi-Fi. I forgot the. Option. But uh, that's what I do, so you don't kill your data or kill your battery. Um, you can find Paul's other baby, the Toonami Faithful Podcast. Damn fucking straight. On, on the Stitcher app. Uh, I, I used to say you could hear Chris, uh, Kevin Smith's Modcast and Chris Hardwick's Nerdist, but <laughs> not anymore. Not Chris Hardwick anymore. Uh, I mean, it's still technically on Stitcher, but, you know, he ain't putting out any more new episodes. after, and Especially after the last episode where I was like, I'm so happy. Um and, it's, then. and the last episode he did was for the Cobra Kai uh, YouTube Red series, but I, and it's funny I have it on my phone and I want to listen to it, but I want to like sit back and revel like ah. Um, and of course, uh, on all devices, we are available on the SoundCloud app. Uh, that's our main hosting site. I, I do make the episodes available for download, uh, so it depends on the device that you have, but you can download the episodes. Uh, but you can listen to them on Stitcher. I'm um, excuse me on SoundCloud. Um, if you want to write us like Oscar has, you can write us at two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. All spelled out, two one podcast dot com. Uh, you, we want your money. We need your money. But if you can't give us a dime, you could at least uh, uh, like this episode, share it on your page, like our page, uh, facebook.com slash two strangers one podcast. Once again, all spelled out. Uh, like the page, like this particular episode on your social media. Uh, get the word out because even if you can't give us a dime, at least sharing it. Uh, it gives us um, uh, props. You know, a shout out to Tommy B, to Chris Mounts, of course, Oscar, uh, loyal listeners and, and longtime listeners. If anybody else wants to uh, get a shout out or anything, come hit us up on the, on the page or, or anything like that. Um, we're technically on Twitter, but I was trying to get that resolved. But we are on a Stranger Podcast. Uh, you can go on YouTube and listen to uh, our older, older episodes. The other six years worth of a podcast are pretty much on there. Um, anything that's not on the SoundCloud, um, you can go back and listen to, and listen to all the horrible episodes that Oscar said <laughs> were, and you can listen to my book, Odd I See a Tale from the Road, also on our YouTube page, and that's it, I acquiesce. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Paul Pascrillo. you can email me, it's paulpascrillo at tunamifaithful.com, Oscar knows how to do that, um, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, if you are if you are a part of the Discord, the Tsunami Discord, or I should say the Tsunami Faithful Discord, uh, you can just add me at Paul Pascrillo. I am on there as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Well, before this episode, we I were like, I don't know what the fuck we're going to talk about, but somehow we pulled an hour and fifteen minutes out of our ass. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for listening. We certainly hope you had as much fun listening as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. Bye. Shut that bitch. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. And punny. But... <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I know, I know. Oh, fucking... Are you sure I didn't write this? <laughs> Uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in Lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. (laughs) This is way more original than Clerks. 
is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think of this? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up. Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www. L-U-L-U dot com. That's Lulu dot com. I understand that. I just wanted to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, Lulu dot com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www dot Lulu dot com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15 and a PDF file is only five bucks. Five dollars is yeah. insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, come! I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker, and his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. And you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.